Now we've ended up at a hibiscus called Sugar Tip. It's quite nice. Double with these little red streaks. But the thing is that there's one branch which seems to have reverted and to this rather splendid mauve version with a large flower. I'm rather loath to cut it out because it would be a shame. I don't think it'll take over the shrub, but it's a lovely thing in its own right. Coming past the um, lovely foliage of the Umbellifer Mathiasella, which has uh, regrown and some of the leaves have turned a kind of a wine red, which is nice. Anyway, we go past this uh, amazingly floriferous and drooping fuchsia, I do not know the name of, in order to show you this uh, great clump of a Lobelia laxiflora. The insects love it. It's a lovely, jolly red and yellow flowers. Coming past Pan with his coat of moss over his shoulders, as well as the lion's coat. I'll show you this multicoloured tree. It's a, a relative of the Judas tree. This is from Circus canadensis, North American. This is a variety called Eternal Flame. Rather good name. This is a Chelsea plant, Chelsea Flower Show plant of the year, one a couple of years back, three years back. I'm not sure about it, quite frankly. It's got all these sort of different colours in the leaves. The new growth starts out very promisingly, shining red, and then it goes a sort of green with reddish bits. Anyway, there it is. Moving along a bit more to my taste is this rather amazing shrub with its great long pendant racemes of tiny flowers which are scented. Some people grow it against the wall so as you can see the dangling flowers but it seems to have produced horizontal stems so it does definitely stand out. This is the holly-leafed Itea, Itea illicifolia. If we walk along here, I just want to show you this slightly weird hydrangea. It's got flowers which are completely bunched up. It's a Japanese selection called Yokudanka. And it featured in my youngest daughter's wedding bouquet a few years back. I think it's rather nice. A close up of the rather congested flower head. making its presence felt. 
is this lovely hydrangea with the uh, chocolate leaves and rather pretty flowers aptly named hot chocolate when the sun's shining the leaves light up at the back which is why i sighted it here on a bank so that you could look from the underneath Coming to the end of the tennis court, revisiting it. One or two things I'd like to show you that have happened since. You can still see the gladioli hanging on there. And here is the very large growing eucumis pineapple lily. Must be about the largest you can grow here in this country. <clears throat> this is eucumis pole evansii. And right next to it is a very dainty little pink number, also from South Africa. And a relative of the Crocosmias, which you can sort of see. This is uh, Tritonia. Got a very long name, but I call it Tritonia rosea. A pretty dainty little number. Coming back from the Tritonia is a, a tree I planted only last year. It's called Albizia, Evie's Pride. And you can see the, uh, the growth goes a sort of chocolate purple color. There's a bit of green. Now this Albizia, I haven't been able to grow the actual chocolate one but this one seems fine and it'll be producing its little pink powder puff flowers when it's another couple of years old but I'll show you one that's actually a small version of the Albizia which is actually flowering now and here is the Albizia in question a smaller Albizia than the rather massive Albizia julibrison rosea. This is Albizia umbrella. Not umbrella, but umbrella. Very attractive shape, I think. And of course, it's been quite small you get a good view of the powder puff flowers. And too tall to see it really from underneath is the 40 year old Albizia julibrison rosea, the standard one. The tree flowering away with its pink powder puffs way up. And in front is the Aurelia silver variegated Aurelia flowering. I think it's a beautiful thing, but some branches have been falling off, unfortunately. It's, it's uh, 30 years old almost. And the heady, not particularly pleasant smell is coming from this extraordinary privet from China, Ligustrum kihui. Kihu was a French botanist. I put it in a slightly out of the way place. Actually, you can see at the top, there's a clematis, a 12 year left, I think it is. Yes, I put it in a slightly out of the way place so that when it's finished, it's not very distinguished and can just blend away into the background until next year.
Now, just walking past the Molomai pine, I noticed at the very top, the female cones have opened up. I don't know if you can see. There they are. They've got their ends are open. And I've noticed bits of cone are on the ground, flaked off, and in there are some seeds. There they are. So I'm going to stick them in a pot and see what happens. I've never noticed that before. The cones, as far as I can see, have never really opened up like they have just now. So it'll be exciting. And in the Victorian garden border is one of my favorite late flowering herbaceous plants, the sunflower lemon queen. Makes a pretty good, pretty good clump. Bright yellow and very jolly. And along here is the ginger lily, Hedicium densiflorum. And this absolutely amazing, and I think must be the largest of the Crocosmias. Star of the East. Pretty amazing size at least 30 years old and flinging herself across the bed here in late summer, associating nicely with these old double anemones, is the herbaceous hybrid clematis called Mrs. Robert Bryden. Slightly coarse foliage, but the flowers I think are jewel-like and really rather beautiful. Hybrid of Clematis tabulosa by Clematis virginiana. North American um, Clematis virginiana is a very widespreading uh, Clematis, also known as the devil's darning needles, presumably from the shape of its uh, seed. And the uh, other parent is a small growing blue Clematis tabulosa which is from China. One's eye is taken by the enormous flower of the hardy hibiscus called Wolverton's Rose Moon. And these flowers are ginormous. And in the background, as a supporting artist are the jewel-like flowers of Eucomus sparkling burgundy. Quite a nice combination.